Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 351 residents interpreted this case of Cauda Equina syndrome as one of 65 cases during 8-hour simulated on-call shift with a median score of 2 out of 10 and an overall average score of 2.26 out of 10. On average, 7.22 points out of 10 were lost due to missed observations. At the same time, 0.38 points were lost due to interpretive errors. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be A and B. In this most missed case, 11% of residents produced effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be F and D. In this most missed case, 84% of residents produced reports with critical errors. This 26-year-old female came into the emergency room with a clinically suspected diagnosis of Cauda Quina syndrome. This is an extremely important situation since Cauda Quina, if it's compressive, is frequently a recoverable cause of lower extremity weakness as well as bowel and bladder dysfunction. So you can begin with the CT, but if we have that clear-cut a um, situation, we recommend, and of course most folks would begin with a contrast and non-contrast MR study, which is what was done in this case. This patient had sort of uh, unfavorable anatomy with regard to her BMI so that the images are a little grainy, but we have to from time to time read through such uh, artifacts. Begin with the uh, T1 weighted non contrast images, and uh, there is no evidence of uh, a, a compression of the fecal sac. There's a little uh, fat in the phylum terminale, no big deal. And let's pay particular attention to the exiting nerve root sheaths and the fecal sac because on subsequent sections you're going to see that there's abnormal enhancement. I'm not going to put them up side by side because I want to put them up uh, individually. And looking uh, then uh, at the fecal sac uh, and the contained nerve roots, we'll look at the T2-weighted uh, axial images. Again, this is not going to be a case of compressive cauda quina syndrome. We can see uh, up at the conus medullaris, things look pretty good. You might begin to wonder about some clumping of the nerve roots here. And it's highly variable what the nerve roots look like in a fecal sac, but they don't tend to centralize like this quite so much. So right away, this should raise the possibility of um, the nerve roots maybe clumping together uh, as seen on these um, uh, T2-weighted uh, images. Now we've got a little more artifact g getting down uh, into the lower motion segments. But again, no compression and then this uh, reasonable belief that there might be some clumping of the nerve root sheaths. Uh, sometimes cauda quina can be uh, mimicked by uh, lumbar cervical plexus problems, and uh, we also should have a good look at the um, uh, pre- and paravertebral soft tissues, pre-sacral area here, and that was all normal. So we're going to focus again on this is going to be a patient presenting with cauda quina syndrome. It's obviously we've excluded uh, compressive uh, neuropathy and uh, and a distal myelopathy. And as we look at the T2-weighted images in the sagittal plane, uh, the nerve roots should be distributed differently here. We should see them all peeling off uh, differentially. So this supports the idea that they're clumped together more in the midline. And so now we're beginning to think of disease processes um, that are inflammatory and perhaps infectious, uh, causing the uh, lower extremity weakness. And in looking at a fat-suppressed uh, T1-weighted image, uh, post-contrast, uh, it's difficult to make out any of the normal anatomy within the fecal sac, and that's because what's going on here is just a lot of leptomeningeal enhancement. So normally a fecal sac should be about that degree of blackness. Obviously it is not, so that this is a, a grossly uh, abnormal T1-weighted image, uh, post-contrast, uh, and then if we go to the post-contrast uh, axial images, uh, if you recall what the um, pre-contrast images 
um, look like. Uh, the post-contrast images, again, noisy because the patient habitus and the coil position wasn't optimal. You might think that's an artifact, but uh, that's a reflection uh, more likely of the enhancement in the thecal sac. And if you believe that's artifact within the thecal sac, I would invite you just to go and look at the sagittal images again. So some of it could be artifact. Most of it is real enhancement. You can see some of the thickened nerve roots here, but the definitive evidence is, uh, you recall, the, the nerve root cheese and the contained nerve roots um, were not enhancing, and obviously um, the, uh, the nerve root uh, and the tissue within the nerve root sheaths is obviously enhancing. So this is, uh, this is an inflammatory um, uh, problem mimicking compressive cauda equina syndrome uh, clinically. And of course, the next step would be to establish uh, a cause for these uh, abnormal enhancing nerve roots. You could consider things like uh, ascending uh, neuropathies, but of course, the most important thing would be to get CSF sampling and exclude uh, an inflammatory disease or get cellular evidence of some infiltrating uh, pathology accounting for this disease. Thank you.